So you guys know I'm from Boulder, right? Everybody knows I'm from Boulder. So Santa Cruz is like a little Boulder. It's kind of like Boulder in a lot of ways. So uh, I was wondering, why is everybody, I get a good response in Santa Cruz. You know, you guys, I don't really have a lot of fans. You're all the fans, pretty much. It's all in Santa Cruz, most of the people. And they're now in Austin, Texas, actually. So what's Austin, Texas, and what's Boulder? And what's Santa Cruz? I'm thinking, why is it? What is it about Santa Cruz? You guys are like old hippies, all of you guys. And I don't mean, I don't even mean it in a way, I don't mean it in a hippie kind of way that we all think of hippies. I mean it in the way like, check this out, because it's very important, it's why you're here, and it's why we all connect. To be a hippie doesn't mean that you're dirty and smelly and steal stuff. It, it doesn't mean that you smoke pot and do acid and love the dead. I mean, those are all things hippies may do, but that's not what it means to be a hippie. What it means to be a hippie, what it means to be a hippie and why it's so, strong, uh, so scary to the mainstream is because to be a hippie is to not buy the bullshit. Yes. That's what it means. That's what, that's what we all have in common here, people. That's what all of you, you may not know each other, but you're not buying the bullshit. And I'm sitting here as somebody who's educated in the bullshit. And I'm telling you, it's bullshit. And while the doctor may be nice and kindly, the medical model is not your friend. It's killing you. It's awful. It is in sneaky, insidious, nefarious, uh, uh, intentional perhaps even. It's so awful. Do you know, not only is cholesterol not bad for you, you should be eating it. Lots of it. Excuse me. I'm getting all excited here. <laughs> You should be eating. There's no top end on how much you should eat. The cholesterol-containing foods are the most powerful. Check this out. Building foods. They're anabolic. And as we'll see here in a minute, when I stop my introductory rant here, there's a war on our building. There's a war on growth and repair. There's a war on healing. I saw a girl in a wheelchair here, and I felt like, well, where's Lisa? Or Lin Lisa, right? And I looked at her and I said, you want to be in a wheelchair? She said, no. You don't have to be. I want to get you out of that. I'm not a heel. I'm not like one of these, you know. But I know how the body works. And guess what? I'm not that smart. I'm not. I just am a data junkie. And these days, if you're a data junkie, you can seem like you're pretty smart. Because data is so available. And information is so available. And not only am I a data junkie where I just love research, I get to work clinically. So I get to see what happens. I see patients. To work clinically means you see patients. So I'm, only, I'm not only doing the research, I'm not only getting the raw data, but I'm also seeing how it works clinically. And let me tell you something, nobody has to be in a wheelchair unless something's broken. The body's a healing system. It's hidden in plain sight. Anybody ever hear that term or that phrase? Hidden in plain sight. It's hidden in plain sight because every time you cut yourself, what happens? Yeah. Right in front of your eyes. Guess what, you think that's just your finger? You think that's just your skin? It's every part of the body. It's in the nature of the body. And I say this all the time, and I know probably some of you are sick of hearing it, but there are some people who will say, who will listen, and then still go to the doctor at the end, and the doctor cannot help you. I don't know how to say it. I'm not mad at doctors. I like them. They're nice people, but the medical model cannot help you because you're breaking down at a level that they don't have access to. Only God has access to that level. Only the spiritual force, which is yours. That's the only thing that has access to that level where healing takes place. Do you understand this? That's why all a doctor can do is cut. And that's why all they, and I don't mean a doctor. I don't want to say, I don't want to beat up on doctors. I don't want to beat up on doctors. They're too easy. That's the low hanging fruit. <laughs> Any doctors here? They make it easy. They make it easy. They do make it easy. They make it easy to pick on them because the dumb things they say, oh my God, the dumb things they say, the dumb, dumb, dumb things they say. But it's the medical model. It's the medical model is helpless at the level where healing and growth and regeneration take place. Thank you, MZ, so much. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you, Phyllis. Thank you, Al and son. Thank you. I mean, I always forget to do this. I always end and I forget to thank. So I'm going to thank everybody right now. Thank you. Where's Dr. Wallach? Thank you wherever Dr. Wallach is. Thank you so much. That man is a genius. Okay? Genius. Genius. Prescient. A uh, 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 polymath. I don't know if he's here. Is he here? Is Dr. Wallach here? He's a polymath. You know what a polymath is? He's a, somebody who brings a genius in many levels and brings them all together into one picture. And if you read his books, 
By the way, if you like to read, and I, I'm a book junkie, I'm a, a bibliophile from the word go, his books are amazing and they're easy to understand and they're accessible to anybody and you will become much, much, much smarter and much better able to handle yours and your family, family's health if you read his books. And they're easy reading. They're easy reading. So anyway, so thank you everybody from the bottom of my heart and thank you all for being here. I love all of you and I appreciate all of you very much and I can't tell you how much I appreciate the support. Thank you so much because this is a mission people. This is a mission and if you got the letters I got, you'd be on fire too. You'd be on fire too over the last, over the course of the last almost 17, 18 years that I've been doing this. Okay, so went to pharmacy school. Uh, I, I remember the, when you go to school, when you go to the uh, enter into the uh, first class, they want to do an interview with you. They want to see who's coming into the school. And I had long hair and I was kind of on the edge because I'm a hippie back, you know, I was skeptical too. I'm like you guys. And I said, I want to study food as medicine. And he thought that was the funniest thing he'd ever heard. <laughs> he said, we don't do any of that. And he laughed. I'll never forget it. And I ended up continuing. I, I was very disappointed, but I was already there and I committed. So I went to pharmacy school. What we learn in pharmacy school is how to use poison. That's what it is. Pharmacos means poison. Right from the get-go, you can see a problem here. We learn to use poison. How to work with the body is poison. But we also study the medicinal impact of substances on the body. Not just medicines, but the medicinal impact of other things, including vitamins and minerals. And so while I'm studying toxicity, and I'm studying prescription medicine, and I'm studying this model of using poison to heal the body, I'm also studying nutrition. And I'm studying diseases as if they were nutritional deficiencies at their core. And they're telling us all the nutritional fish deficiencies that are at the core of all the diseases that we suffer from. And I wasn't the smartest guy in the world. I'm thinking, well, gosh, if these are poisons, and we're learning how to control them to somehow get them to do their work without killing people, and these are nutrients which are the true core of the deficiency of the disease process, why the heck aren't we using nutrients? And I graduated pharmacy school with this thing in my head about what was just was a little distress at what was going on here. And I got out into the world of pharmacy, and I'm dispensing medicines. And I'm dispensing medicines that I know from pharmacy school I didn't even want to touch or smell. And I'm giving them to your grandmother and my grandmother. And not only that, but she's got 12 bottles or 15 bottles and she's putting them on the counter. I'm like, what the heck is going on here? And then I start to notice that the people who are getting all the medicine are the old people and the little kids. The most vulnerable people in our culture are getting the medicines. And then I'm noticing nobody's getting better. They're staying on the medicine and it's hidden in plain sight. It's like you're not getting better. What is the point of the medicine? So little by little, I started to sneak in nutrition into the pharmacy. And this was 1986, 1987. And this is kind of radical in 1986, 1987. And so Mrs. Jones would come in for a blood pressure medicine. I'd give her some magnesium. You know, I, I, or, or somebody would come in for their antibiotic. I'd say, here's some probiotics. Make sure you take them afterwards. I start doing little things like that. And little by little, just from the nutrients that I was using, just from the essential, I would do essential fatty acid, magnesium for blood pressure. That was a big one. I do B5 for acne. That's another one. And uh, I noticed that they're really improving in a way that their medicine wasn't touching. So, I, like I said, I'm not the smartest guy in the world, but I got the message. I got the message. And then one day, I'm sitting in. Uh, I'm sitting in my office. Uh, I, I, I did some skincare. Some of you may know I'm also in the skincare. So I had a skincare lab, and I'm sitting in my skincare lab and uh, tinkering around some stuff. And there's a knock on the door, and it's the mailman. I get the mail, and there's a tape in the mail. Never forget this day. Tape in the mail. Dead doctors don't lie. <laughs> and I stick it in, and this is like 1992. I'm like, oh my God, who is this guy? He's saying everything I knew from pharmacy school and more. He's saying things only pharmacists know about how about liquids and about colloidal minerals and about, gluc uh, about uh, glucosamine, things nobody said before. And so uh, I just listened to the tape over and over again, and I started doing talks. And uh, one day I'm at the gym working out, and I can talk to a guy, to that doctor's online. Oh, I know that guy. Yeah, he's a friend of my friends. And I thought, what? You know Dr. Wallach? He said, yeah. I said, oh, so tell him I want to meet him. Anything. He said, oh, no problem. This is 96, 97. 
Dr. Wallach comes to my lab, we have a nice talk, blah, blah, blah. Next thing you know, I'm doing his radio show, Dead Doctors Don't Lie, and the rest is history. And that's how I got involved with all this stuff. And what happened, what I've seen since 1996, I think I met Dr. Wallach in 97. Since 1997, when I started seeing this, I have seen the most incredible, phenomenal things happen to the body. First it was with just the colloidal minerals, and then it was with just the glucosamine, and now it's with the Beyond Tangy Tangerine. Folks, I cannot tell you how many letters I've seen in the last 15 years, five or 10 a week in the last two years that I've been doing the radio show, from people losing weight, from people making changes. When I say to uh, Lisa that she's gonna get out of that chair, I'm saying it because I've seen it. When I say to somebody uh, that your diabetes is going to drop, you can drop your insulin wherever that gal is, you're going to drop your insulin, I say because I've seen it so many times. You think I'm passionate, you'd be passionate too if you see, saw this stuff happen as often as I have. But what we have to understand is this. We have to be hippies. We have to be skeptical about what we hear. Even for me, you have to be skeptical. Why do you think I give you the science? I, sometimes people say I go into too much detail, right? You're, have you heard? You know, I sometimes bring that up on the air. I, people think I go into too much detail. I want you to have detail. Because I want you to make the decision. I want to give you the detail so you make the decision. I don't want to tell you what to do. I hate when, when I have to tell people to take this supplement or that supplement. I want you to figure it out. I'll tell you the logic. The troubleshooting. It's troubleshooting is what it is. Troubleshooting, problem solving, backtracking. That's all. That's what your doctor should be doing. Your doctor should be backtracking, but that's not what doctoring is. What does the word doctor mean? You go to the, the IRS and you say, I doctored these, Mr. IRS man. What would he say? You know, these are doctored, <laughs> right? That's good, <laughs> right? And oh, I'm a doctor. Like, you're proud of that? You doctor? You, you commit fraud? That's what doctoring is. It's to commit a fraud. What you should be doing is you should be backtracking, not hacking into the body to pretend that the, the digestive system works because the gallbladder's gone. That's smart. Of course you don't have any more gallbladder pain. You don't have a gallbladder. Uh, that's smart, you know? Oh, I got a headache. Don't touch my head. Don't, uh, go touch my head, okay? That's the same logic. Cancer, chemotherapy. Curing cancer, right? You are cancer. They're your cells. Well, of course, your chemotherapy is killing yourself. It's not what you do to take care of cancer. We're going to kill cancer. That's killing yourself. That's curing cancer. Now, I say this to you, and some of you may hear this. And you say, well, why, why, I didn't think, why didn't I think of it? And that's the bottom line here. That's what I want to start off by talking about. We don't understand our bodies. And why? Well, it's one thing to not understand your car. I don't understand my car. I don't know what the heck's going on. <laughs> Something's going on in my, wrong in my engine. I don't know what the heck's going on. And that guy, I'm not a genius. That guy who fixes my car, that guy's a genius. My computer, the same way. The kid. 17 years old, he takes the thing out. What the hell is going on in there? Those wires and those, those circuits and everything. How am I going to make any? He just knows, pulls one out, puts the other one in. And that's a genius. What I'm talking about is how to understand something that is the most relevant and intimate and should be the easiest thing there is to understand, and that's our bodies. But how many of us in this room know what our gallbladder does? Pancreas. Where vitamin C is absorbed. Liver. What a liver cell is. Anything. How many of us, yet we, is there any more intimate or important? Is there? Help me. Is there? Is there anything more? No. No money, no job, no spouse, no girlfriend, nothing. If you are not healthy, nothing. There's not a, a billion dollars and dying of cancer or broke and healthy. What would you rather be? Please. Please. <laughs> Please. It's not even an argument, right? So if we're focusing on money, if we're focusing on, on spouses and on relationships and all these other things, and nothing is more important than our bodies, we're missing something here. And so we have to understand the basics. And so what I'm gonna do, to you, uh, what I'm gonna do for you guys here today is I'm gonna tell you some of the basics. And I, there's so much to talk about. There's so, 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 so much to talk about that is gonna be the scratching of the surface. But my number one goal here is to get you fired up so that you wanna to start to work on your bodies yourself. And number two, it's to get you fired up so you want to start to participate in using a good nutritional supplement program. And how many of you guys are using the Longevity products right now? Okay. Now, I know there's all this stuff about to be skeptical about multi-level and this and that, blah, blah, blah. There is no, first of all, there's no better, more egalitarian, democratic, fraternal business than you can be in than multi-level. 